These are 14 Boss RC500 features that you need to know, showcasing the latest and greatest settings to help you get the most out of your loop station. First, let's take a look at probably one of the main features as to why you've purchased an RC500, and that is some of the new rhythm settings. More specifically, some shortcuts to allow you to navigate this much faster. Compared to an older loop station like the Boss RC300, the RC500, its latest predecessor, has revolutionized the rhythm settings and also the control you have over these styles of parameters. Uh, the quality of the drum sounds are better, but also the variations of different drum grooves and the things you can enable and disable are pretty useful. Now a handy shortcut that you can use to access these parameters is by holding the rhythm on and off button for a couple of seconds. And this is a shortcut that takes you straight into the rhythm settings. Prior to knowing this, you would have to go into the memory settings and then scroll, 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 scroll all the way over to rhythm and then select rhythm. So it's much quicker just to hold that for a couple of seconds and it gets you straight in there. Also very useful for when you're on stage and you need that quick access. Another press and hold command is also located on this tap tempo button here. If we input a random tempo, 300 BPM, that's way too fast. The option we would have to reset this would be to tap tempo and then dial it in with the encoder. Tedious. Instead, if you wanted to reset this back to 120 BPM, the default for all your patches on your RZ500, you just press and hold the tap tempo button for a couple of seconds, it will flash and then it will reset it back to the base tempo or the default tempo for that preset. So for example, that's 120. If we went ahead and changed this to 128 and we so saved this memory and we wrote it to memory bank two, if we were to do the same thing again and press and hold the tap tempo button, it would return it back to 128 BPM. Very useful feature again for in case you accidentally tap tempo way too fast on stage and you mess things up, you can quickly reset it back to its base BPM. On the topic of things flashing and displays, something very cool you can do on the RC500 is customize the LCD loop light indicator. To access these, you wanna dive into your master menu, go into general, then scroll over to display mode. Here we've got a lot of different things that we can show when it comes to the operation of the lights. Status, status position, two track positions, and uh, numbers, name, etc. If for example, we leave it on status, this will tell us when we record, it will clearly state record. This is one of my favorite modes. I think it's just super easy to follow. It will say when something is playing back. It will say when we're overdubbing and so on. But what we can do to take this to the next level, if you don't like that, is to play around with these different options here. So obviously this is a dual track loop station. So let's go for two track position. Now, when a loop track is playing, you will see how long loop track one is taking to complete. Switch over to loop track two, and we record another loop on here. Maybe make this one a little bit shorter. And you can see the different progression bars on both of the loops. And if you're using loop sync, loop quantize, and so on, these would obviously be going in tandem with one another in their loop cycle phases. As you can see there, they complete at the same time. So we've got a four measure loop and potentially a two measure loop here, uh, which we did super quick. Features like this make the Boss RC500 a fantastic loop station for any beginner because it is so obvious what the loop pedal's doing. There's no confusion. And if it is confusing you, you can just change the display mode to whatever your preference is. And then that way you can either use it as a reference as to what the pedals are doing, what the position of the tracks are, or even what the beat currently is to help improve your timing when recording and playing along with your loops. Another handy feature to know about for saving time when navigating your memory patches is a shortcut with this encoder value here. So by default on the RC500, when you wanna switch between your memory banks, you would just scroll through them like this, but obviously there are 99 preset banks. Now, when you get the loop station straight out of the box, this isn't a problem because you're using the first few ones. But when you've had this for a few years, like I have at this stage, I've had it since it came out in 2021, I think it was, maybe 2020 actually, you start to fill up all your memory patches and I've got two of these loop stations. So the way that you then wanna combat this is you might, for example, be performing and you've got a song on patch five, like I have right here, then you might have a, a song all the way over on like patch 68 or something crazy. You can see how long it takes to scroll over to that. It takes a long, long time. But thankfully there is a shortcut to speed this up by pressing and holding the memory value. So if you press it in, it'll click and then rotate it. It will go through in tens. So let's say we wanted to target like 64. We'll scroll over to patch four, press and hold, rotate, just six times, boom, straight onto 64. Very fast way to navigate the pedal, saves you loads of time, 
and frustration. On the topic of useful features that you may not be aware of, and also additional tutorial videos that you may not know about. Over on my website, I have got the Boss RC500 Ultimate Guide, which is a complete video manual that takes you through every single setting on this pedal and how you can combine them all together for the ultimate setup. This includes over three hours of on-demand video, 47 lessons, and 10 modules that break down the different types and styles of settings, which saves you from having to scroll endless hours of YouTube videos for little tutorials here and there, and also having to read that awful boss manual. Those boss manuals are terrible now. They tell you hardly anything how to operate. You've got to boot up the website to get the parameters guide, just for straight and clunky. Whereas instead, you can watch high quality tutorial videos that visually explain exactly how to do things step by step and provide answers to all of your questions. I'll leave a link to that down below in the video description. We've got thousands of students now over on my official website and we've got loads of reviews and up mostly four or five stars. It's absolutely exceptional. Next, let me explain to you the different styles of settings on your Boss RC500. Let's first focus on the master menu here, which are what used to be called system settings. If you are a user of old Boss loop stations, they used to have system settings, memory settings, track settings, effects, and so on, rhythm settings, whereas now they have menu, which is your system settings. These are global parameters. Whatever you change inside of here will be applied across every single memory bank, all 99 of them instantly. So you don't need to save it, you don't need to back out or reboot the pedal, it's boom, it's just applied straight away. These are useful things. For example, you've got the general, which is some of your display stuff, how the undo redo operates, the display mode, which you've already taken a look at in today's video. But you've also got different preferences as to, again, the pedal preferences on per patch basis. So you can customize how these pedals operate on each memory patch. So you on patch one, you could have them operate in a different manner to on patch two and so on. But that does mean if you want a universal way of it working, you'd have to change and save it 99 times. Luckily here, you can dive in and decide whether you want your pedal preferences to be memory specific or system specific. So you just change them once and it applies across the board, which is how I personally have it. Got pedal preferences for all three pedals and also for your expression pedals and external foot switches that you may wish to connect. You then also have all your MIDI settings, storage options, and also your factory reset. If you've purchased this unit pre-owned from somebody, I personally would recommend factory resetting it because they may have tweaked a few things and it's not really operating perfectly. And then from there, you've got a nice base point to start from for customizing and creating your own presets. Next, let's take a look at the track settings, which are accessed over here with these edit buttons. Inside of here, you have access to various different parameters to manipulate how the loop tracks are operating and the different features and record modes available to them along with the audio routing. A very cool advanced feature on the RC500 is how you can route audio to different loop tracks. So you could have input one, or mic, uh, mic in or instrument in, only go to track one or instrument A and so on. It gives you a lot of flexibility, which is something you couldn't do on other generations of Boss loop pedals until this one, obviously the newer ones like the 600 and 505 Mark II. You can do that with both track one and also track two, you have the exact same settings that you can customize and switch out. A very handy feature to be aware of when it comes to the track settings is the edit buttons. If you press these at the exact same time simultaneously, it will select both of the loop tracks at the exact same time. Then you could go ahead and clear them off, do whatever it is that you need to do. Alternatively, the other way that you track select at the same time is by pressing and holding this foot switch for a few seconds, two to three seconds. As you can see, that took quite a bit of time. And if you're building out loads and loads and loads of patches, that can just become a little bit annoying compared to just literally pressing those and it doing it straight away. Now let's move on to pedal functions, which ties into some of those system settings I just mentioned. If you remember in the master menu, we had this area called preferences, where we could change how pedal one, two, three, and so on were operating, whether it was memory bank specific or system setting global. Within our memory settings, we can scroll over to this sub menu called control. Inside of here, we can change how the pedal functions work on the RC500. Currently, we have got pedal function one to be record play. So if we click record, it goes uh, red, records, and then it instantly plays back overdubs, etc. But there are other ways we can change this to be record, play, stop, record, play, stop, clear, and a few others that you could play around with, record, play, record, play, clear, etc. Or just stop. Yeah, there's loads. There's loads. I'm not going to go through them all. Let me show you this one here, which is record, play, stop, clear. So this butt switch has now been changed, where we can now double tap it, and it will stop this loop track. And then also we can press and hold it, and it will now clear this loop track. This is very useful because if we tie this in with pedal function two, right now this is just a stop foot switch, but we could go ahead and change this to be loop track two, record play stop. So if we go to our track two settings, 
we'll do the exact same thing. Recall play start clear. Now we can access both track one and track two on the exact same memory bank, easy peasy. And then we could change this track select foot switch to be whatever we like, all play, all stop, etc. So let me show you an example of how this operates. Foot switch one will now trigger loop track one. As you can see on the display, it is recording. It will then play back. Now foot pedal two will trigger loop track two. That is now recording. Go ahead and play that back. Boom. So we've now got two loop tracks working with one another. We can then double tap this and it'll stop. We can double tap this and it'll stop, etc. And then also we can press and hold this and it'll clear it out. Now our loop pedal is blank. That's just an example of pedal preferences. You can play around with those, figure out which is best for you. I talk more about this inside of the ultimate guide at a little bit of a slower pace as well with different examples. Next, let's talk about some of the MIDI features at the back of the Boss RC500 and how you can leverage these. These can be used in a variety of different ways, connecting external foot switches, so you can have a huge foot pedal working with this thing. Or alternatively, you could actually sync this up to another loop station. So you could either have two Boss RC500s working together, making a four track loop station, or you could link this up to a Boss RC5 for a three track loop station, or an RC600, RC505, ceilings unlimited. Anything that supports MIDI clock data could be synced up to this loop station, whether that be a delay pedal, a multi-effects unit, by leveraging these mini uh, MIDI connections at the rear. I have a full video here on the channel that breaks down the exact process of using the MIDI sync, as well as one inside of the ultimate guide. But I wanted to make you aware that this is actually something that you can do, because prior to the release of the Boss RC600, I was actually using this as my predominant loop station setup. I would have two Boss RC500s for a four track loop station. It had the awesome 32 bit sound. It just sounded much better. It had the better audio routing capabilities than something like the RC300 and even the original Boss RC505. And I used it for a good year, year and a half until those newer loop stations hit the market. You can see these in a bunch of old performance videos here on the channel where I even made, I think it was a 13 or 14 track loop station combining every Boss loop pedal that I have here in the studio, all via MIDI clock sync of which the Boss RC500 500 was actually the master unit for a majority of that syncing because of how good its onboard MIDI clock data is. Another useful feature to pair with the MIDI sync, especially if you are going to be using multiple pedals, is a mixing console. With a mixer, you can use this to expand the amount of input you have available running into your loop station. If you are a looper, got a complex setup, you're probably doing multi-instrumental looping. So you're doing more than just guitar and vocals. So you're running out of slots on the back of your RC500. You maybe got drum pads, you maybe got keyboards, synthesizers, other peculiar instruments that are mic'd up, whatever it is, I'm sure you've got it. But you'll need a mixer in order to plug all of those in. You might have 16 inputs. I remember on my massive live looping setup, we had like 16 stereo, all the stereo going in. It was crazy. So by using an external mixer, you can plug all of your instruments into that, EQ them, apply compression, apply the effects, mix them with the track faders, and then run a stereo left and right out directly into your Boss RC500. That then goes straight into this loop station, and you now have got as many instruments as you like, as however big your mixing console is, running into your tiny little pedal. This is a trick that I've used ever since I was about 13 years old, or well over 10 years now, and um, when I first started looping with the Boss RC300 and had very complicated setups. This is super easy to do. Grab yourself a mixer, plug all your instruments into them, mix them, and then throw the left and right out into the back of the Boss RC500, and then route your Boss RC500 into your main speaker. And then just like that, you have expanded the inputs available on your tiny pedal. Now, obviously, if you are going to be doing more complicated things in regards to multi-instrumental looping, you may want to take this one step further with the expanding of the mixing console and also do some advanced audio routing in the internals of the RC500. Now, newer pedals like the Boss RC505 Mark II and Boss RC600 have got much more comprehensive audio routing features available to them, both via the USB functionality and also the extra inputs and outputs at the rear. However, the Boss RC500, although it lacks USB functionality in terms of audio capabilities, it still does all right for the size of this thing. Because we have got the XLR jack and also the two input jacks plus the stereo outs, you can have a degree of fairly decent audio routing. So if you go into your track effects, you can scroll over to different things such as your input and output, and you can dictate the end destination of this loop track. So you can dictate which inputs will go on to loop track one, whether that be the mic in, the instruments in, the instrument in A or in B microphone and instrument and so on. So you can customize whether you want to have like track one dedicated to just your vocals, for example, with the XLR. Again, if you've got multiple instruments routed in a, a mixing desk, you could have the left and rights going to different destinations on different loop tracks. So you've got that flexibility there, but then also you've got the flexibility of the output of each of the loop tracks. So loop track one could go to output A, output B, 
and so on. You can then do the same for the master output and things inside of uh, the main menu over here. It sounds a little bit harder than it actually is to get something like this set up. It's worth playing around with for five, 10 minutes and you'll probably find it much easier, especially if you're recording your performances into Logic or something like that and you wanna make you know, some YouTube videos or post stuff on Facebook. An advanced feature for those of you that like to use the rhythm section are drum parts. So you can see you can select your pattern, different drum beats that you want, but you also have the option for variations. So each drum beat has got variation A, variation B. These usually consist of hi-hat ride cymbal, you know, for the chorus, so it's got a different vibe. But you also have got the option to switch out things such as the drum kit that's actually playing the pre-recorded pattern, whether it be a studio drum kit, a drum congas or a rock metal drum kit, lots of different options. But one of the most advanced features right at the end of the rhythm settings menu are parts. Within the parts, you've got four different options, and this allows you to enable and disable different elements of the drum group. So for example, you could disable the snare, you could disable the kick, you could disable the ride or hi-hats, the crashes, and it allows you to bring a beat down if you want it to be more of a breakdown section, just the kick and snare going doom. Doom, and then you could enable part three for the ride to come in or vice versa. You could remove the snare so it's just the ride and kick. And then with an external pedal, you could enable drum part two, drum part three, drum part four. It just allows you to turn the drummer on and off which instrument or part of the kit they're actually striking. It just gives you that further control over just variation A and variation B. And it's very useful if you do use a lot of backing tracks and things with the onboard rhythm section. On the topic of using external foot switches, you can of course use something like this, a Boss FS6 that gives you two additional buttons mapped onto your RC500. I use these things for all clear or stop starts, different things of that nature. But to your surprise, you may not realize you can actually connect a MIDI foot controller. Now a MIDI foot controller gives you way more assign controls all the way up to eight assigns. You see here, we have all these different assigns within our memory. We can connect a MIDI foot controller via the connections at the back and we can create eight additional commands on here. So you could literally remap this entire pedal to an external control surface, whether that be tabletop or on the floor. And it just gives you way more control and customization. You do this via CC commands. So inside of here, you turn on your command and then you change the source of the pedal to MIDI or whatever CC number it needs to be. And then you coincide that with the external MIDI foot pedal. And then you tie that in with the command, turn, uh, turn this on and off, record, stop, track select, clear, undo, redo, etc. turn this drum part on off and so on. And this combined with an external foot switch gives you a lot of flexibility and options within your looping setup, especially considering how small and compact the Boss RC500 is. And to complete all of this knowledge of the Boss RC500, the final thing that you want to know about is writing your memory banks. You may customize all of these settings that I've just shared with you in today's video, but as soon as you rotate that memory knob value, boom, that's them gone for eternity. And you have to reset it back up and spend another 20 minutes of your life, 30 minutes of your life doing so. Well, thankfully, if you press exit and enter simultaneously at the exact same time, this will take you into the read and write utility where you can go ahead and clear i.e. delete a loop off if you've recorded any audio on there and you're like, that's a little bit bad. Or you can just go ahead and write it. This will then save it to the memory bank, save it onto the onboard memory, and all those changes are now embedded onto your RC500. You can even take this one step further and dive into the memory menu, scroll all the way to the end and rename this memory bank. You'll notice that I did that over on this one here and called it Ben, and you can really start to customize and personalize your RC500 loop station. If you want to learn more about everything discussed in today's video, and also at a much slower pace, the biggest complaint about YouTube videos in general is that it's just a little bit too quick, fast paced in terms of the, the knowledge, because it's just surface level. It's just giving you an overview of these things that exist. But inside of my ultimate guides, I break down everything exactly step by step, way slower, because there isn't the same time restrictions as on YouTube. This allows me to go into much greater details so you definitely get things set up and working on your pedal at home. So if you want some of the most detailed and comprehensive tutorials ever made on the Boss RC500, be sure to check out that link down below in the video description for my Boss RC500 Ultimate Guide. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to see some more crazy things that the Boss RC500 could do, you should check out this video next.